Shanghai GDG is a very interesting、uh, developer community. I'm glad somebody has asked this question. I- this is where the magic happens. This is primarily a question and answer show. So, if any of you out there would like to ask questions. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yarek Vilkevich. Welcome to YouTube Developers Live. We have an exciting show for you today. We'll talk about gaming. But first, let me introduce our guests. My co-host in the studio here is Jeremy Walker. Hello, everyone. How are you doing, Jeremy? Pretty good. Pretty you good. Have a good weekend. I did. I got some have sleep. You, have you played a bunch of games?、Um, I have. All right. We'll talk、Which、about that. <laughs>、uh, on my left,、uh, Cliff Samaniego. Hello. Hi, Cliff. How's it going? Going good. How about how is your gaming going?、Uh, gaming is going well. Okay, cool.、Uh, we have Kenji Arai. Kenji is a world famous mobile gamer. What? He beats every record. <laughs> I try, <laughs> but fail miserably usually. And、uh, they'll talk about、uh, YouTube gaming.、Uh, they're both from our gaming business development、uh, organization. And on the hangout, we have Jeffrey Posnick. Hey, everybody. How's life in New York, Jeff?、Uh, it's doing pretty well. You could. See the lovely, lush background over here. Still summertime in in New York. Yeah, yes, which is not always pleasant, but it's it's been pretty good right now. Great. So、uh, let's get to it.、Um, one、uh, word of warning:、uh, since Cliff and Kenji work、uh, in business development, they refuse to come without the、uh, deck. So they need a presentation in order to structure our their thoughts. And I think this is just a sign of the professionalism. So what we'll do is we'll, it'll be more of a Webinar slash discussion uh, style uh, presentation today, and really the reason why we wanted to、uh, talk to you about game、uh, integration is because gaming is really big on YouTube,、uh, but、uh, there's still challenges、uh, from technical standpoint、uh, with respect to integration between your game、uh, and our YouTube APIs, and then also uh, not uh, everyone knows about all the opportunities that exist、uh, for game developers when it comes to really taking advantage. Uh, of our platform,、uh, such as uh, monetization, uh, additional analytics, and so forth. So this is what、uh, Cliff and Kenji will、uh, cover, and then we'll also show you、uh, a bunch of cool bla- gameplay videos because、uh, obviously we can't have a show without、uh, seeing some YouTube videos. And later on, Jeff will cover a couple of important blog posts.、Uh, I know、uh, all the people watching today have read、uh, our blog posts because、uh, they are read in real time as we. Post them, right, Jeremy? Exactly. I know Jeremy does that, <laughs>、uh, but just in case,、uh, we're gonna have Jeff、uh, cover that for you. So,、uh, how does how does the agenda sound? Sounds pretty Sounds good. All right. Okay. So off, let, let's get to it. So let me jump to the、uh, presentation, and we are sharing it right here in the hangout.、Uh, we'll make that deck available for you、uh, later on, and、uh, let's just、uh, go through this. So、uh, here's our agenda. Uh, we'll chat about、uh, the game publishers that have integrated with YouTube.、Uh, give you some examples.、Uh, talk about the benefits of integration, like what you actually get out of it.、Uh, cover some best practices, both pre-launch and post-launch. So Cliff and Kenji have been working with game publishers for quite a while, so they have、uh, amassed a body of knowledge that we hope to share、uh, with you today. And we'll chat about some of the implementation mechanisms、uh, for both console game I- games and, and mobile games. Uh, some best practices in this area, and、uh, if you are watching this live,、uh, we have a moderator link in the uh, YouTube uh, video description. So if you click on that link,、uh, you can submit questions to us, and Jeremy will go through them one by one and answer. Yes, I definitely. We already have a couple, so all right, we're great. Keeping an eye on that. So,、uh, Cliff, tell us more about、uh, <laughs> gaming and YouTube. Yeah, so we've had a number of different integrations,、um, primarily with a lot of game publishers.、Um, most of them are console,、um, but some of them are PC.、Um, in the last couple of years,、um, we've had a number of different game titles. Some of them include Call of Duty, for example,、uh, both Black Ops、um, as well as Modern Warfare Three.、Uh, we've integrated with、uh, Team Fortress Two as well as Dirt Three,、um, as well as NBA Two K Twelve. Uncharted um, Three, um, as well as PlayStation at Home,、um, and all of them have been very, very different API integrations.、Um, but you know, gaming is such a visceral and video-centric、um, thing that、uh, you know, in order to actually feel the game,、um, you know, it's a great experience for game publishers to integrate with their APIs and then upload them to YouTube.、Um, Kenji, did you have anything to add to that? 
Uh, no, I mean, I think you know, uh, users want to share their achievements, want to share their their fails. Uh, it definitely gets a lot of views on YouTube. So uh, giving the users the ability to do so freely, uh, you're actually pretty surprised what you find and kind of the creativity from the users. So you know, giving them the tools really does kind of allow them to express themselves, and a lot of them play their games and. Uh, and that's the way they participate on YouTube. So uh, we hope that more publishers and developers integrate with our APIs. Yeah, we wanted to sh um, just show you some examples. It's really hard to imagine. I think the best way to really picture what we're doing in terms of the API integrations with the consoles and PC games um, is to check them out um, in terms of the game capture that have been uploaded to YouTube by a lot of users. So here's a good example, um, Team, For Team Fortress 2. Um, they actually did a pretty good integration. Um, it's coming from uh, a PC title. Uh, and then also, they managed to do a really good award um, competition. So they tried to capture some of the best uploads coming from the API, um, which really encouraged engagement with a lot of the users. So here's an example of Team Fortress 2. And this is the one that actually, I believe, uh, won the award. Called best overall. Best overall. And this one's called El Muchacho. In a land without law, one man will make a stand in the name of justice. And his name is El Muchacho. El Muchacho. <laughs> XLR 105 Production presents El Muchacho. Coming to a theater near you. Bell time. That was pretty cool. And here's an example from Black Ops. Um, did you want to go to that? Uh, yeah, so let's chat a little bit about okay. Black Ops, and then we'll show the example. So Black Ops, um, you know, so far in terms of our API, has been the most successful. Um, we integrated this uh, in 2000, late 2010. Uh, early 2011. And um, Activision was really, really happy with the integration. Um, just within the span of four months, uh, you know, we had uh, 4 million uploads and 70 million um, views of those uploads. So very, very successful. I think a lot of users were very encouraged by seeing a lot of their highlights uploaded to YouTube. So it really fed into more people uploading and more people watching those particular videos. Um, Activision was really, really happy with the integration. They even spoke um, with us both at Google I.O. Uh, as well as uh, GDC. So here's an example of one of the uploads coming from Black Ops. Did you, did you do this one, Cliff, or is it uh, uh, user generated? Uh, that's user generated. See the native style. Normally, the missile would hit me. <laughs> so these are just, nice. you know, very, very, you know, interesting moments that people have within a game. And generally, you know, if you don't integrate with an API and upload it to YouTube, it's just something that you're sharing with the people within the room. However, when you're able to upload it through our API and up to YouTube, you're able to share that video because it's captured, it's on demand, um, and you can share your infamy with others. Yeah, and I think this is, uh, you know, I think publishers and developers can really take advantage of like everybody's social graph, whether it's putting on Google Plus, Twitter, or Facebook, um, users, you know. Want to share those moments with their friends? Like, you know, if I captured me jumping over a missile, I would certainly be bragging about it with my friends. Um, like I said, a missile would likely hit me, but I would probably share that moment with my friends too. But I think, you know, publishers and developers want to be in this sort of social environment and really taking advantage of, uh, you know, users kind of doing that legwork for them and sharing it with their close friends, with the people that kind of follow them. 
uh, through whatever their social mechanism are, I think is really important. I think video can be a really big anchor point for uh, publishers to take advantage of through their fans. And and before we kick off this next gameplay of Dirt oh, Three, come on, I want to see that. Before we watch this, I mean, imagine that you haven't even heard of Dirt Three or even um, knew about the game Dirt Three from Codemasters. Um, and then watching something like this on YouTube, um, more often than not, it's going to speak for itself in terms of the graphics and um, you know the gameplay and the mechanics of the game. So this is a really good marketing and promotional tool, as Kenji said, for a lot of the game publishers. So let's Can watch we see the it now, please? sure. Thank you. Roll it. <laughs> Roll it. All right, wow. waiting for the massive crash here. Is this how you drive, Kenji? This is this is the exact opposite of how I drive. This is how you want to drive. This is not how I want to drive. <laughs> this is my kid in the car. <laughs> oh, <laughs> now I get it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think my daughter would appreciate this role. Ouch! Yeah. But but he survived, right? It was it was yeah. all good. So that's, I mean, that's a great example. Um, you know, if I never have heard of Dirt 3 and never played the game, this might be actually an avenue for me to get interested in the game and playing the game and buying the game. Um, and I think that's a lot of, of what we're trying to do in terms of helping out game publishers is get front and center of our huge gaming audience within YouTube and um, tapping into that audience. Cool. So what did I get out of it? Uh, Kenji, you want to cover promotion? I mean, I think we kind of talked about it in this mm -hmm. one where you know, I think you allow uh, the YouTube audience, which is what I think 800 million plus strong now, uh, you know, the, the opportunity to, um, you know, to discover new game titles. I mean, Google's, uh, Google's number one search engine, YouTube's number two search engine. Um, and so people are always constantly looking for things. And depending on what type of metadata you're really using uh, to capture those uh, when you're uploading gameplay footage um, through the API, you can maximize uh, you know, your discovery through the metadata and things like that. So you, know, you really just kind of let your users kind of make your sort of promotional outlets for you. Um, and I think that's kind of like the powerful thing to do. In all this right, situation. that's all good. But show me the money. Show <laughs> <laughs> me the money. <laughs> um, yeah, we do. We do have options for game publishers and developers to actually participate in uh, ad-supported um, content. So anything that does come through your technology, your API integration uh, with us, um, we actually allow you to claim that content and uh, put ads on it. And you can create sort of an incremental revenue stream. And when you start thinking about you know, the long tail of content and millions and millions of uploads and all those views that kind of compile on top of it, you start to do the math in your head where maybe the resources that you put into it, you know, get paid, you know, paid in full, you know, all the way back, even more so with some of the uh, revenues that you can make, not to mention the users that you'll be able to discover and uh, pot potentially engage with later on. So say, you know, I'm a game developer, build a game, I want to monetize that content. What do I do? Like, do I call you or? Do I post yeah, online for help, or I think like, right now I my cell phone number is going to come up right do here. I need to <laughs> <laughs> do I need to sign anything? Like, well, how does the process work? Because this is one of the areas that I think frequently developers have tr hard time understanding. You know, mm -hmm. for content owners, we have YouTube Partnership Program where you go to YouTube.com/partner, you know, sign up and and get vetted. So, how does the uh, app developer approach this? Like, what what's the actual process? I mean, I think uh, you know, first things first. Like, we we want to know who you are, so. Uh, I think, Yark, you can provide sort of an alias that folks can kind of email into to kind of at least give us a little bit of a pipeline of who potentially are interested in such a program like this. Um, once you, we you guys, just to interrupt you, if, if you're watching this and you are a game developer, just ping our Google Developers, yeah. uh, YouTube uh, Developers page, and uh, we'll hook you up with these guys. Yeah, and now keep in mind that um, you know, if you're interested in using the APIs, you don't necessarily have to be a partner. Right, you can use our APIs regardless. But if you want to um, monetize your content, meaning monetize the UGC uploads that are coming from the API, then you're um, going to have to become a partner. Um, and you know, there's definitely agreements that we need to sign with you in order to uh, start monetizing those uploads. 
So how does it work from license perspective? Some publishers grant uh, users the license to basically upload and monetize themselves. Others don't. Is that something that an application developer has to think upfront, uh, or this, is this something that the publisher does? Like, what is the the process before they even you know sign up with uh, with a partnership program? Like, what's what are there any gotcha things to consider upfront? I think ultimately, what you want to make sure is who owns the rights to the content. There are definitely game titles out there where the developer has sort of given the rights to the users to do whatever they want with. Now, obviously, the pr there's some pros and cons that come with that. But uh, for the most part, what Cliff and I see is, you know, I think there's you know, pretty you know, normal language within most terms of uh, service, terms of use, where uh, the rights still kind of go with the publishers or the developers. And so unless the publisher or developer then grants you know, users' rights, you know, it can be a little bit of a, a sticky situation for users to monetize it on their own. Although um, there are definitely a lot of users who monetize gameplay footage um, on YouTube, thanks to various different partnerships that uh, some of our content creators have with the publishers and developers. So I think ultimately, you know, when you when you think about your content, um, it's not just about the gameplay and the game, you know, footage that you guys create within the game, just in terms of uh, you know playing the game. I think what you want to think about is, you know, when people create content, show their gameplay, who ends up, who kind of owns it, and then what benefits are you kind of get, you know, uh, give, granting your users, taking for yourselves, I guess, is a thing that you want to consider. And I think, you know, to add to what Cliff said, you know, it's not just about monetizing, it is about sort of being able to gain analytics from all that gameplay that gets put onto YouTube as well, so that. Not only, you know, yes, showing the money, it's, it's certainly something that you may be interested in, but I think really getting closer to your users is something that's a, even a bigger priority, right, for a lot of people that we work with. The money is sort of a, a secondary, thir you know, uh, third priority, but it's kind of a nice to have. Um, but ultimately, um, you know, really getting close to the users and finding out, like, there's that one person who all of a sudden has half a million views, million views for something that they did. Maybe you know the game developer, or game publisher wants to reach out to that person and and uh, you know form a more formal relationship with that person. Yeah, so. I would say that analytics are also a hugely important um, piece of the puzzle for a lot of the game publishers. Monetization is great, right? Everybody wants to make a little bit of money. However, um, there's a lot of users and a lot of videos that are on YouTube that you don't really have insight to. But if you're uploading and claiming those videos from the API, now you have a lot of insight in terms of who's playing your game, how they're playing your game, what moments they feel are the best moments within the game. Absolutely. Um, so it's really it's a really good um, you know feature set for your for a lot of game publishers to tap into that um, that audience. Great. As as a YouTube partner, are there any uh, additional analytics that uh, can be uh, obtained? If you uh, are in the partnership program, um, are there additional reports, or you know, is it how does it compare with you know long tail uh -huh. developer that just uses standard terms of service? Uh, th th they will probably receive the same analytics um, that a regular user who has a channel has. Mm -hmm. um, you're you're basically going to get demographics. Uh, you're going to get video view counts. Um, you're going to learn where a lot of those viewers are coming from in terms of, you know, geography. Um, you're going to learn, um, you know, what are the most popular videos um, and see, you know, um, you know how many view counts those those have had. Um, I think the one thing that is different though is when you're actually making a claim on a piece of content, we can actually give you that additional, like that additional information, but. If you are simply using our APIs kind of outside of a partnership, um, because there isn't a lot of claiming that's going on where you're sort of ta basically tagging a video saying you own that, that IP, um, you know, it kind of goes off into the YouTube corpus and kind of exists on the, on the platform, but you won't actually be able to see sort of the granular data that's actually on the screen right now on the analytics very businessy slide that Yark has put up. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, I, it from I, Cliff. <laughs> I see we have the up and to the right uh, the graph. Although there is a dip in the green line, but <laughs> I'll try not to try not to worry about that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think the uh, the important distinction is that um, if you are a partner and a content owner, 
then you can actually have uh, analytics that span multiple accounts into Absolutely. which the uh, content is being uploaded, right? Yeah. Versus, uh, you know, mm. if you uh, use a developer key and you associate mm -hmm. uh, right. these uploads with developer key, yes, you still can get analytics as far as kind of number of uploads. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there's not as much information about the views and demographics yeah. because okay, that's I see what actually you're getting yeah. user's account. That was a tricky question. <laughs> 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 you threw a curveball at me. I'm just making sure that's that, that's that that's you, know, why you don't only play <laughs> games for a living, man. You're, <laughs> supposed to, you're supposed to throw up volleyballs. <laughs> that's yeah. why you invited me to so this So I can session. spike them down. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. but I mean, I think that's what, like, and, and the system that kind of there's, it's in the screenshot right here, this is also the system that would uh, give you sort of access to, you know, the top videos. You could kind of filter out by, like, all the, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, four million videos. Um, you can kind of see, uh, you know, you can sort it by who's getting the most views, and then potentially reaching out to that user directly on YouTube and um, seeing what they're all about and seeing if they might be able to help you guys out even further. Like I said, you guys can potentially create a more formal uh, relationship with your user community. But sometimes it's just hard to find out who they actually are without doing searches and things of a manual nature on YouTube. So this actually really helps automate that. Yeah, speaking of community, I think this site has a nice example of what Valve did with um, their user-generated upload capability, where they would, you know, grant additional uh, uh, items to players that reach certain milestones on YouTube really mm -hmm. to entice them uh, to upload. So there's a lot of creative uh, work being done by kind of gamifying the uh, YouTube uh, experience for the yeah, players. Yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of ways in which game publish game publishers can reach out to the community once. You have a, a lot of content on YouTube. Um, you know, the slide was mentioning a number of different things that you could do, such as um, curating playlists, right? Curating playlists so you can have, you know, best shots, for example, if it's for Call of Duty, or best crashes if for, if it was Dirt Three. Um, so there's a number of different thing that, things that you can do with the API, and um, you know, use the data API to curate and automate those playlists. Um, and then, as Yark was saying, you could also reach out um, to the to your audience by having participation with different contests. And so Cliff, uh, you, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. uh, you, know, you guys have been doing this for a while, so I wanted to make sure that we cover the kind of best practices. You know, what do you worry about before you launch? What do you do after you launch? Because it's not you know, kind of one-shot <coughs> uh, effort. Yeah. Uh, so should we go through some yeah, of these? Yeah. Let's dive in. Uh, steps. You know, your collective wisdom from the past couple of years. Yep. So with pre-launch, there's a number of things that you should obviously um, start thinking about. Um, one of them is what is the goal of having and integrating the API into your game? Um, and you know, Kenji went through some of these, which it might be monetization, for example. It might be diving into analytics of a lot of your users. Um, and it might be just developing engagement with your community, right? So you need to think about what your goals are because then we can tailor the APIs according to those goals. Um, another thing to think about, um, and we run into this all the time with a lot of game publishers, is that you need a technical lead um, once you decide that you're going to start diving into the API and integrating with YouTube. And the reason being is um, you know, there's a lot to do in terms of integrating with YouTube, um, and so you need a spokesperson who's going to sort of be the quarterback to handle all of the different steps and think about how to integrate with YouTube. Um, in terms of other things, uh, let me see here. Oh, I another thing is this: uh, you should always <coughs> have an established YouTube channel. I think we've run into it some game publishers. Um, who didn't have a YouTube channel. And it's important to have a YouTube channel so we know where we can direct um, you know, the, some of the you know, playbacks, or if you're cur curating playlists, we can put it in, drop it into the channel. You were going to say something, uh, Kenji? Oh, yeah. I'm, I was probably coughing too. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think like, you want to establish your presence on, on YouTube. I think like, you know, having a channel and having a place where we can put videos is one thing. But I think it's also about establishing who you are on YouTube. Because you are going to be talking to people. Like, you're going to be interacting with other users and stuff like that. And so they're going to want to see what you're up to, whether it's your trailers, where it's sort of behind the scenes stuff. Let your videos kind of allow your users and your fans to get to know who you are. And then when you interact with them, it kind of feels more authentic, like you're actually part of the community. So um, I don't think 
uh, you know, we can stress it enough to just sort of establish your identity and then participate. Yeah, and if you need help in terms of developing your channel or launching your channel, you can always go to youtube.com slash playbook. Um, and you can download um, our playbook, and it is pretty dense in terms of all the different different tips and tricks to help develop your channel. Yeah, Yarek, if you think this deck is dense, <laughs> you go ahead and check out our playbook. <laughs> I have checked it out. Oh, it's okay. actually very interesting for uh, for content creators. I think it's pretty awesome. And, and with the pre-launch, you, 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 you still want them to <laughs> reach out to you <laughs> guys, like kind of talk through. I mean, have you had many people that have not reached out to you and been successful? Usually. Um, what happens is it really depends on if they're already a YouTube partner or not. Um, if they're a YouTube partner, we're more or less talking to a lot of our game publishers on a daily basis. And then they you know, show their interest in terms of working with us with an API and integrating. Um, if they're not a partner, more often than not, it's coming through Yark. And Yark's the one who's sort of passing on a, a lead to us. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know we'll be able to talk about the partnership, and then Yark and his team is going to handle sort of the technical side of the API. Yeah, we'll definitely help you out with that. Okay, so we launched the game. Now what? Um, in terms of post-launch, you know, there's a number of things um, that you should look into. First of all. Um, you know what we're running into uh, with a lot of our API um, integrations is that. They've done all the technical work in terms of integrating with YouTube. However, they haven't really gone the step of educating their users on how to upload from the game. And I think this is really important. Um, it's just as, e you know, it could be as easy as creating a video where you're walking the user through the different steps to upload um, through your game and then posting it onto your channel on YouTube. But um, some of these you know, game capture um, feature sets are really buried within the game. So it's really important to put it front and center um, and then show people how to actually upload and the different steps to upload to YouTube. Um, another thing it, that we recommend is uh, curating playlists. So there is a data API in which you're going to be able to take a number of different metadata and sort by that metadata. Um, and so one of the things that you can do is just sort by, for example, the most viewed or the most commented, and then create a playlist out of those. Um, so that's just one example. But curating playlists is really important. What you want to do is you want to bubble up the really good content, and you want to really uh, empower your users, right, and have them talk about your game. So definitely bubble up the ones that users already find interesting. Um, another thing is is uh, analyze your data, right? We talked a little bit about one of the you know features of the APIs and one of the benefits is the analytics, but analyze your your um, your data, right? And try to figure out you know where are your demographics coming from? Who are your viewers? Um, who are your your uploaders? Um, you know you could also try to figure out you know. If there's a lull in the uploads, maybe you want to push in terms of marketing the game um, and, and uh, market the game at that sweet spot. Um, but there's a number of things that you can figure out with just looking at your analytics. Um, let me see here. What else? Anything you want to add to that, Kenji? Content. I was looking at your five bullet points here. <laughs> I think we already talked about creating contests. I think it's just about after the launch happens, like it's really just diving in with your community. I think, you know, educating your users how to upload. I think what uh, Cliff was referring to was, I think when we first launched the uh, integration with uh, Black Ops, it was kind of a, a feature that was buried a little bit within theater mode. And luckily, we had uh, folks. I don't know if you're actually going to show the video. Yeah, you know, yeah we're going to go through that. You know, we had you know partners that were out there that kind of educate the community for us. So we were lucky to have them. And Yark will show you a video of that. Um, but it's about you know engaging with your community. And so don't just let these users kind of uh, just upload stuff like mindlessly. Give them sort of goals and things to hit because they're gamers. They're, they want goals. They want to kind of hit those levels. And <clears throat> they want to impress you. So uh, when you give them something to aim for, you know, likely they'll hit it and probably uh, surprise you with a little bit more. Yeah, and, and I would just add that. Uh, and Kenji pretty much spoke to this, but um, you know, YouTube is a two-way dialogue, right? Um, your users can upload through the API, but if you, through your channel, communicate with them and say, "Hey, we'd like to see more uploads of you know this type of 
kill within Call of Duty. Four right? headshots. <laughs> or, um, you know, this particular move within Uncharted 3, right? Um, you're going to get that response. Um, another thing that you can do is watch the videos that are being uploaded to YouTube through the API, comment on those videos, or you can highlight those the, vid the videos that you really like and put them into your channel um, and feature it within your channel. Um, you know, these are things that are going to have that two-way dialogue with your users. Great. So uh, let's dive in a little bit and, and walk through a couple of uh, implementation examples. Uh, and if you have uh, some additional questions about this uh, section, we actually have more in-depth presentations available uh, online. And we'll post the links to these um, after this session. Uh, but we uh, mentioned one integration that uh, we did uh, earlier uh, with uh, Call of Duty, uh, Black Ops, and now uh, Modern Warfare 3. Um, so at Google I.O. 2011, we actually uh, co-presented with Activision, and we described uh, how uh, the system was built uh, in more detail. And, and here's a, a kind of an overview of, of, of how the system worked. So this is a console game uh, integration. Um, it works for both uh, PlayStation and, and the Xbox. Uh, what Activision did is they actually had a middleware team which uh, was actually responsible for uh, delivering the videos to YouTube. So the video was rendered locally on the console uh, and then uploaded to their middleware, uh, which is a team uh, called Demonware. And then from Demonware, it was actually pushed using the uh, API uh, to YouTube. Uh, one thing that they did do is they actually had uh, an, uh, a way for users to link uh, their gaming account with their YouTube account uh, uh, through uh, now all. Uh, and that uh, allows the uploads to go into individuals' user accounts. And this is something that I think we can't stress enough. Uh, frequently, we have uh, you know, partners that come and, and, and insist on trying to uh, push everything into a single um, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, but there are issues with that. Uh, I mean, first of all, uh, you, know, you, you will s somewhat deprive the users of the sense of ownership of their own content, so they won't be able to uh, you know, delete the video easily mm -hmm. if they want to, and, and, and they will have less of an incentive to share it. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is where all it comes into the picture. You can still uh, have a fair amount of control over what the content looks like, uh, you know, ad associated metadata and so forth, but then the video actually ends up in the user's account. And this is the, the case with Activision. They did have an option for users that didn't have accounts uh, to actually upload into a common channel, but what they found is, is over time, uh, most users were actually um, incentivized to uh, create these accounts and link and upload it into their own channel. And I, I think a lot of the concern with game publishers is if they, for example, allow um, users to upload to into their individual channel, that there's a sense of loss of control over those videos. And um, you know, one thing that we always have to remind a lot of the game publishers is that you can always grab those videos and put it into a playlist and put it into your own channel. So. You can take sort of the cream of the crop videos and put them into your channel, but allow the user to have the power and control. Yeah, I think there's a, always a fine balance between you know kind of what the publisher mm -hmm. wants and, and what the YouTube community uh, wants and expects. Right? Sure. So this is a great example where you know if it's user generated content, uh, their, our recommendation is to let users upload it into their own accounts uh, through a playlist. You can still curate that content. Uh, you can uh, track it if you actually uh, are a YouTube partner. Um, you can actually obtain the analytics information. So all the good things that come out of the integrations uh, are, are possible. Uh, so let's look at uh, the Black Ops uh, uploads user experience. As, as Kenji mentioned, uh, the initial version uh, of the game had it uh, a little buried. I'm just going to play this The video. only things that you need are an Xbox 360 or PS3, the game itself, an internet connection, and a YouTube account. The greatest thing about this method is that you can do this all without using a capture card or any cables or wires, and most importantly, this process is all free. I'm going to go step by step, and if you still have any questions or comments after I finish, you can post them below, and I will do my best to help you. The first step is to go to callofduty.com and register an account there. Once you do that, go to callofduty.com slash theater and link your gamer tag, which will require you using your Windows Live ID. Now go back to callofduty.com slash theater and on that page, click to link your YouTube account, and then click to allow access to your account. If you don't allow access, this process will not work. Now switch over to your Xbox or PS3 and go into multiplayer, then into theater. 
select the gameplay that you want, and while you are watching that game, record a clip that is 30 seconds or less. Name the clip, save it, and upload it to your file share. Now get out of viewing the full game and then take your clip from your file share and click select for playback. Now you'll notice that the render clip option is available, so click on that and then the clip will be opened and it will run through once. After, you will see a loading screen for the clip, which means that it is being uploaded and rendered to the internet. After a few hours, your clip should be uploaded to your YouTube account and to your file share on callofduty.com slash theater. This part does take some time, so don't expect the clip to be there as soon as your rendered clip is complete. So in other words, try to be patient. Are you patient for this? Be patient. <laughs> that that is key. Um, okay. So so this was the uh, the user experience. As you see, uh, even though uh, it was not super straightforward, uh -huh. uh, there is lots of gamers that actually uh, found a way to uh, to go through this, and mm -hmm. and consequently, uh, we got a lot of this type of content. And I think the the nice part about the experience is there's no need for capture card, and you know you can just uh, upload it directly from your game. And then the, the other piece that uh, wasn't really emphasized too much is the, the fact that um, Call of Duty has a theater mode mm -hmm. where you can actually uh, uh, edit that uh, content somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was certainly was really helpful for us to have guys like Anaj from our friends at Machinima to help sort of educate uh, the community. And so, like we kind of talked about earlier, if you do decide to go down this route of you know integrating you know an API upload feature into your game, definitely have that content prepared because I think users are going to want to know how to do it and where it goes and um, you know instead of having your community team bombarded with questions, you know let a video kind of speak for it and speak for you guys. And uh, again, if you would like to know more about uh, this particular integration, we'll share a post. Um, uh, on our developers page uh, with the link to the video uh, from the session and the uh, uh, presentation slides. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about mobile. So this is something we did at uh, Google I.O. 12. We uh, talked about uh, integration uh, into your mobile titles. Uh, so let uh, me show you one of the options that uh, is getting traction uh, lately. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, we had uh, guys from Comcord here. Uh, they are pursuing this option, uh, this option quite successfully. Uh, at I.O., we uh, presented uh, jointly with uh, Dude Perfect. If you're a basketball fan, then uh, you know who Dude Perfect is. If you're not, then I highly encourage you to Google uh, uh, Dude Perfect channel and, 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 and check out some of their videos. But uh, the process for mobile games uh, looks something like this. Uh, uh, in the case of uh, Dude Perfect, actually, the uh, game is written on top of Unity Engine. Uh, and uh, <coughs> the uh, AV frames from the uh, games are actually encoded uh, in their integration using FFmpeg. Uh, video frames are uh, encoded using uh, VP8. Uh, so this is a part of the WebM suite. Uh, audio frames are encoded using Vorbis. Next, uh, the actual corresponding uh, file is, is uh, uh, wrapped in the WebM container. So again, this is technology that it's actually available from uh, Google. So if you look for webmproject.org, uh, uh, you'll see all the source uh, and, and you're welcome to use it. Uh, once that is done, then uh, this is where the YouTube API comes into the picture. So you actually have the audio video file encoded, wrapped into a webm uh, container, and, and you can use our RESTful APIs to push it over uh, to YouTube. So it's really as simple as this. Now, this all happens on the mobile device. Uh, so obviously, there are some challenges as far as the processing power of the device and how much time the user is willing uh, to spend uh, waiting on it. Now, on some platforms, uh, some the encoding process can actually be hardware accelerated. So this is an area where we see uh, you know, rapid uh, progress and, and a lot of innovation. Uh, I think Kenji is, as I mentioned, he's a world famous mobile gamer. Uh, I think he's really <laughs> uh, looking forward to getting some of these uh, clips on YouTube. Sure. Uh, <laughs> so uh, one interesting example uh, that uh, I always like to bring up, because I have kids, is Talking Tom. And uh, if any of you guys 
uh, or gals in the audience have kids, you probably have this application on your phone already. This is a virtual pet application. You can talk to the cat, interact with the cat. But one cool feature of that application is the YouTube upload. And, and they're actually uh, co-presented with us at uh, GDC earlier in the year. Uh, this is what uh, their uh, integration looks like. Uh, again, thanks for uh, allowing us to share this information both at GDC and Google I.O. Uh, the company that builds a talking tome is called uh, Outfit 7. You can download it on your Android or iOS device. Uh, <coughs> so in, in their case, they actually implemented the local video rendering and encoding. Uh, it's reasonably low resolution, low frame rate, so 10 frames per second, um, encoded uh, using the MOV container uh, MPEG-4 uh, and AAC audio. Uh, one thing that they've done a really good job of is including uh, a lot of metadata with these uploads. So if you actually look uh, closely, you will see that every upload includes a link to uh, the actual game. So in this case, uh, uh, the uh, um, Alpha 7 actually now has a franchise, so there's many characters. So this was an upload that I uh, did from the Talking Ben um, application, and uh, he's a really cool laid back. Uh, doc. I was told he's modeled after uh, the uh, Great Lebowski, but I'm not sure if that's <laughs> true or not. Uh, <laughs> and uh, what you see here is there's a download link in, in the metadata. So please take advantage of that. This is free advertising for your game. You can just include it as a part of your metadata uh, during the upload. And then when users view the video on YouTube, they will be able to click on that link. And you can take them wherever you want. And typically, this is you know you can take them to Google Play so they can actually uh, download the application. Uh, then tags that are uh, helpful with uh, video discovery. Uh, this slide uh, shows the uh, creator's view. Uh, Jeff is actually going to talk a little bit more about uh, some of the changes in, in the tagging area. But that's another thing that helps us. Uh, Cliff mentioned you know, a lot of the video is driven by discovery. So we show related videos and so forth so people can actually spend more time on YouTube. So if, uh, if you actually do a good job of the metadata, uh, chances are that the videos will get uh, more views. So let's uh, look at an example uh, gameplay video or uh, virtual pet video. And uh, I'll give Kenji credit for uh, finding this one. I think he's a big fan of oh, Bruno Mars. Hi, Bruno Mars. Today I don't feel like doing anything. I just want to lay in my <laughs> bed. Don't feel like picking up my phone to leave a message at a tone. Because today I swear I'm not doing anything. <laughs> I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> 5.7 wow. million views. Yeah. Almost 6 million views. That's yeah, incredible. So that, that's just amazing. Um, so this is what, what you get if you actually do a good job uh, integrate. So uh, finally, let's go through through a, a quick list of best practices. I will make this like, available for you so you can uh, look at it offline. But uh, a couple of things to remember. So first of all, uh, make sure that uh, you have a developer key. And uh, uh, for version 2 of the API, uh, you can go to code.google.com APIs YouTube dashboard, uh, and you can get it there. Uh, use it uh, with your uploads. Uh, you can use direct uploads or resumable uploads. It's, again, this depends on your architecture. For mobile games, we recommend uh, resumable uploads so that if you lose connectivity, uh, you have actually uh, quite a bit of time to uh, reestablish uh, the upload and just upload whatever it is that, uh, that was missed. Um, Next, uh, use developer tags. So this is a feature that is frequently overlooked by developers. Uh, what it allows you to do is really encode uh, application-specific metadata in the video and then use our search index to actually find it. Uh, for example, if you're curating playlists on your portal, uh, you can use uh, these tags to actually figure out you know, which level uh, the gameplay is about or what weapons are being used and so forth. So this is entirely up to you of what you encode in that information. And it, it allows you to actually offload some of the database uh, searches onto our search index. And as Kenji mentioned, we are reasonably good at, uh, at reasonably. that. Reasonably. Um, <coughs> and then uh, consider quotas. Uh, last week, we had a, a more in-depth uh, version of, of uh, our quota uh, best practices talk. Uh, the starting point for that is, is this, this blog post. Uh, that's something that we always uh, make sure that, that partners uh, think about in their uploads uh, implementation. If, if you have a server-side system and, and there's a bunch of uh, uploads happening in parallel, make sure that uh, you, know, you follow the quota best uh, practices. Uh, now, for partners, uh, we have a content management system. And this is something that Kenji and Cliff 
uh, we're explaining that allows you to actually manage this content once, once it gets uploaded. Uh, the first step there is, is actually before you even launch is make sure that you set up a content management system policy uh, for that content and associate that with a developer key. Because this is something that allows you to actually automatically claim the content as soon as uh, you s YouTube receives it as a part of the upload will actually apply the policy that you have designed uh, to that content. So that's, uh, this is something you, you want to do ahead of time, get everything set up, and when you launch your game, you know, when the uploads start coming from your users, you will actually be able to track them, uh, analyze them, and then uh, hopefully monetize them uh, if that is important to you. It's not, it doesn't seem important to Kenji. Why not? <laughs> it's important to you. Everything's important. And let me just explain policies. I mean, policies are basically rules that you're going to set once you're a partner for um, your videos or your uploads. And the policies can take um, three different rules. Um, the first is to monetize it, so monetize all uploads or monetize a upload. Um, the second is to track it, so you're getting the user data on those videos um, and uh, not monetizing it. And the third is blocking. Um, probably you're not going to use block. Obviously, if you're opening up the API to you know, record your uploads and upload them through the API, you're probably not going to use that policy. Thanks for, for clarifying that. And finally, uh, encoding specifications. So uh, I mentioned WebM, VP8, uh, Vorpes. Uh, if you use other containers, other codecs, uh, we have a detailed list of specifications that we recommend, resolutions, bit trays, and so forth, all the good stuff. Uh, it's here in the link. Uh, I'll share this deck. So, so if you are actually working on the, uh, on the capture process, uh, encoding process, then, then consider that. Uh, so this concludes uh, our session. Before we transition to Q&A, um, I was uh, hoping that Jeff could cover some of the recent developments uh, in the YouTube uh, blog uh, world. Jeff, are you on the line with us? Absolutely. Still there? All right. Yeah, Over to you. Me. All right. Cool. Uh, and thanks, Cliff and Kenji, for joining us and providing all that useful information. And yeah, so we have two recent blog posts, um, both of which have come out since our last uh, Google Developers Live, and I wanted to cover them fairly quickly. Uh, as always, you should refer to the official blog uh, to read them yourselves. It's apiblog.youtube.com, uh, where you can find all our posts. Uh, so the first one has to do with playlist uh, identifiers that are returned and read by the API. So. Uh, for those who have ever seen a YouTube playlist web page, um, you know, some sort of page where you go to on the YouTube website and you, you're viewing a playlist, and you've taken a look at what the URL is, you might have noticed that the identifier for that um, playlist, when shown in the URL bar, has the prefix PL on it. And that's been kind of universal on the website for about a year or so. Um, we have not supported that prefix for playlist identifiers in the data API, though. Uh, so a lot of times we'll have people you know, who had copied a playlist identifier from a web page. They've tried to pass it in to the API when you know, making a call to retrieve the contents of a playlist or something along those lines. And they've gotten back in an error indicating, hey, this playlist doesn't exist. So basically, what we've done is added support for uh, playlists that have that PL pre prefix on them. And we'll both read those values. So when you're constructing a URL um, that has to do with a playlist, you could include those prefixed uh, playlist IDs. Or if you're passing in you know, metadata and you're updating the playlist or something like that, you can pass in those PL values. Uh, but what we're also doing is returning those playlist uh, with, with the prefixes by default. So if you get back a list of all the playlists in a given account, or if you do a search for playlists that match a certain search term, uh, the identifiers that you get back from the API will now include that PL prefix in the playlist IDs. Uh, so we are still going to support um, old style unprefixed playlist IDs, um, certainly for the time being, in read requests or update requests. So you could continue to pass in those um, unprefixed identifiers. Uh, but you know, we do hope that folks, you know, first of all, are, are not reading too much into what the identifiers returned by the API is. Um, I hope there's not folks out there who wrote codes thinking, OK, you know, playlist identifiers are always going to be x number of characters long, and now your code breaks because it's two characters longer. 
than it used to be. So please don't make those assumptions. And um, you know, one thing in particular to keep in mind, if you have a playlist ID that was stored somewhere in the database or something, and then you're comparing it with uh, a response that you get back from the data API now, if your playlist ID did not include the PL prefix, and you expect it to be equal to something you get back from the API right now, you might be surprised. So just keep that in the back of your head if you happen to have code that makes those sorts of assumptions. So that's uh, one of the changes. The other change uh, is related to a recent blog post that we had on our YouTube creator blog. And you know, I, I think folks probably have also uh, realized this if they've gone to a YouTube watch page recently. And that's basically the fact that we're not exposing the keywords or video tags. Um, you know, There's two different terms that basically mean the same thing uh, for a given video uh, publicly anymore. So if I happen to be a user who's you know, watching some random video uploaded on Google, developer, Google Developer's account, I won't see the specific keywords um, that have been tagged, that have been used to tag that video. Um, it's not going to affect anything related to search, though. So I can continue to you know, search for you know, YouTube API and videos that have been tagged by the uploader with the tag YouTube API will show up in the search results. Uh, so this is just about what we're exposing to random people who are viewing the video. Um, so that went live on the website a couple of weeks ago. And what's going to go live fairly soon in the API, um, it's going to go live on the staging server a little bit later today, and I think in production next week, is the fact that we're going to be pretty much doing the same thing for API responses. So if you get a video entry back from the API now, and you are not authenticated as the owner of the video, uh, you're going to see a blank media keywords element in the response. Uh, if you are authenticated as the owner of the video, though, you'll continue to get your keywords back. And you can continue to add keywords to new videos that you upload. And you can update existing videos to include whatever keywords you'd like. Um, so that doesn't change from the perspective of the owner of the video or the uploader of the video. Uh, so what really is changing is the public information to non-authenticated users uh, that we're returning. So um, just please keep in mind that if you do have an application that lets people update the metadata of an existing video, and you are signed in as the owner of that video, um, when you're reading that video entry, like maybe you have an app that lets you fetch all your existing videos and change some of the metadata, be sure that when you do the, the fetching, the initial get of those videos, that you're properly authenticated as the owner. And that way, you'll get back the media keywords. Um, and you can display it to the user. And the user could make updates. And you won't end up returning no media keywords because you make an unauthenticated request and accidentally you know, wiping out all the existing keywords for the user. So that's, that's the one probably most important thing to keep in mind. Um, it's a bit of an edge case. But you know, if you happen to be in that camp, uh, watch out for that. Cool. And, and okay. both of them are described on our blog post in, in more detail, right? Absolutely. Great. Great. Jeremy, how is the uh, any questions on the on the moderator? Yeah, we, we have, have a couple. Few minutes left. I think we have like three minutes, so I'll run through these pretty quickly. All right. Um, quick plug, don't forget <coughs> we are hiring. Um, so go to developers.google.com slash jobs. You know, we, we have some openings, we'd love to hear from you. So if you are interested, check that out. Um, we have about three questions. Um, one is about a Chrome, using Chrome with Flash and, and recording with a webcam. Uh, basically, they say it's a little bit laggy. Um, so, you know, our response to that is, uh, you know, let us know the bug ID, and we can bug the right people. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just kind of follow up with that if you could. Um, but like, if, if we if we don't have that, we can't do a whole lot. So. Um, that would be great. Autoplay, we, we hear this a lot. This is on iOS. Is basically um, you're using it embed with the iframe, and uh, autoplay doesn't work on iOS. Um, that's just something that's part of Apple. They don't let you autoplay videos. It's iOS just doesn't do that. Um, Jeff, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Yeah, uh, I mean, it definitely comes up quite a bit in um, the Google group, and I have recently put together a post in the Google group that kind of spells out exactly what's going on and points to Apple's official documentation and 
you know, I'm doing my best to convince people that this really is not something that YouTube is doing deli deliberately, but this is a policy that Apple has in place, you know, for, for fairly sensible reasons. And um, there are ways of working around it if you happen to be using a packaged, you know, official iOS application that's using a UI web view. And in that case, you can change the default so to, to allow playbacks by default. Um, but if you are just opening a web page, uh, by default, you can't do that. Or, or you just can't do that at all. So um, check the Google group. And maybe I'll post a link to my response to the Google group in our um, Google Plus account just to highlight it to folks who might be watching at home who want to read that. Yeah, and, and then to follow up on that, there was one last bug uh, or uh, question around the, uh, the iframe API saying it doesn't work in Chrome and um, Safari. Uh, and I think it's just that the video doesn't play. So um, uh, Jeff has already posted a link to follow up on that. And I think it's just kind of a rehash of what we just discussed. So those are all the questions. We still have a minute left. <laughs> Can we do a coast to coast wave? Jeremy, start it off. Yeah. Ready? <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> Jeff. Back, back <laughs> to back to the West Coast. Back to the West Coast. Jeremy, start again. Whoa! <laughs> all right. So this is why these guys work in games. They have fun all the time. That's why they never work. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks everyone. Well, thanks for joining us. Thank you guys. See you next week, Wednesday, the usual slot. Bye, Bye everybody. <laughs>